Hi, it's violinist Hannah Warmer and I'm doing a tutorial today on how to play with good tone on your violin. So many of you will know that I've recently been doing a bit of a dare, which is using the same strings for a year and a half on the violin. Well, the dare was to use the same strings until someone noticed that my tone was going down. No one noticed. And that was mainly down to the tone of um, the bow control. So yes, my strings have been deteriorating for a long time, but um, the tone that you can produce, people put too much weight often into what instrument they're buying, what um, quality of strings, and they're constantly upgrading their equipment, which is important, the equipment. But most of our tone comes from our actual playing and technique. And so this is where we're gonna be looking at the bow today. So I would say the left hand is mainly to do with intonation and things like that, but the bow is to do with the tone control. And it's really the heart of the violin. So um, the best way to look at this bow, lots of people have different ways of teaching bow hold from beginners. But I, I'm always against, many teachers say this finger goes there, this finger goes there, this, but everyone's hand is very, very different. Different size, different lengths um, between each knuckle, and so there's no one way of holding a bow. There is a principle, and that's what we're going to talk to, talk to you about today, the principle of holding the bow, but there's no exact bow hold for one person. Um, what you really want to do is, first of all, I'll just show you my bow hold. You really want the weight to be in the center of the hand at most time. So not holding it like that. That's a big no. Not holding it like that, pushing all your weight down. Um, not having your thumb forward and not having your thumb too far back, but the thumb in between those two fingers. So that's a really good principle. So pretty much everything curled. Um, and most of the bow hold will be between those fingers and the thumb nice and curled. Let's see if we can get a good shot of that. Then simply, there is a balance point with this finger and a balance point with the little finger sitting on the end. I'm just gonna move my hand down a little bit more. So um, this here stops the bow from tilting down and this here stops the bow from pinging up too much. Now, that is a well-balanced bow in the bow hand. So the way we get to that is simply if you let your hand flop onto the bow naturally um, if you can do it in the middle actually so let your hand flop that's my natural hand position so floppy hand now if we move that down to here that's where we bring those two fingers in bend and bend okay the reason we want this is because if we are not we're, we're balanced at the back of the hand it's quite a whispery sound and there's absolutely no control over the instrument so it's hard to control it onto one string it's hard to get the fine details of the sound if we are and so many people do this lean into that finger to keep that it on the right string what tends to happen is this sound perhaps less than that but a very harsh tone see so here's some people so my face goes doesn't it <laughs> So you hear some people playing sort of like yeah squeaky violin sound comes from too much index finger um now what we really want to do is balance the sound as i say nice balanced sound but as we go to the heel the weight is in the back of the bow so it's going to be more more weight taken in the little finger still nice and balanced but the weight's taken in the little finger. And when we're down at the point, sorry, I'm a bit zoomed in here, but when we're down at the point, I lift, most of the weight is into the index finger, not much in the little finger. I'll just show you that there. So, um, yes, depending where we are in the bow, it does change, but the most important thing we want is a balanced sound. So once you've got this bow hold, um, there are some techniques we can do to actually get those fingers moving. So we want rappy fingers controlling this bow and they're very fine motor skills that you have to gradually learn so a good thing is to pull in and then let go pull in let go again to get this little finger working a nice little tap there and again index fingers not we use index fingers a lot but getting that little finger working is a really good idea next thing once it's balanced and it's on the string let it sit on the string 100 percent and then let your hand sit into the bow that natural weight from your arm into your hand 
creates that perfect open sound. And then, according to our weight, we have to judge how fast to move the bow. If you move it too slowly, and that's from the natural way. But if you move it too quickly, so we want to be able to get a good start and learn to control it all the way through with no bumps. And that is something that even many professionals cannot do, is actually controlling that sound and getting that pure sound. We want to get as close to as possible without doing that. We don't want to be a whispery. So a good way to do that is to actually start to learn to use um, your bow slower and to find out how much you can actually put into one bow stroke. So if we, for instance, with a metronome click, one, two, three, four. If we divide our bow in half and have four clicks per half, go. One, two, three, four. One, two. Now we do on the other bow. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now, if you really want to improve the sound, then you want to be playing on the thin edge of the bow, thin with a TH, <laughs> not the fat, fat <laughs> edge. So the thin edge of the bow means that the sound is concentrated into that very thin point. And that means more weight is going into one area of the string, creating a much more, a, a purer quality of tone. So we're gonna try it again this time. Can you curl your fingers around? curling the bow, it's hard to see on here, but the hair's towards my face. Not away from my face, but towards my face. And we're gonna do four beats per half bow. Go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and then up again. One, two, and start to work out what fingers in your hands are controlling. And we're controlling, we're taking the weight of the bow. So it's my index finger at the moment and it's passing through the middle of my hand and then this little finger is taking the weight now. What you don't want to do is to be pushing. You want the natural weight of your arm to flop into the bow and you're just controlling the weight with your fingers depending on where the balance is. Okay, once you can do that, try and get four beats per quarter of the bow. Go. One, two, three, four. And try and get the two, three, four, one, Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Sorry, I was trying to talk and play it, so I'm trying to keep the tone going. Once we do that, you can simply add that to scale. So now there, I'm using way too much bow, so we want to slow this bow down whilst playing quickly with our fingers. And we're gonna see if I can do an even slower bow whilst playing quickly with fingers. But what you'll see happen now is the sound got quieter. So now, loud sound, fast bow, a uh, fast fingers, slow bow. Working on that a little bit each day will really add to your technique. And it's those fine principles, those principles that should be ingrained from the beginning that are the difference between truly great violinists of the future and perhaps more mediocre ones. So hopefully you like this tutorial. Hopefully comment if you've tried the tutorial and let me know how you got on. Also, I'd love to see what you'd like um, for future tutorials. So make sure you get all this in the comments. And if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe.